Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. My name is Matt Gardner, and today I have founder and artistic director of Keeping People Connected. Her name is Catherine Pettit. Catherine, how are you today? Good. Thanks, Matt. Good to talk to you today. Yes, great to have you on. So we had our uh, first initial sort of meet and greet. I want to say a little, little over a week ago. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I really like what you're, what you're doing. I love how you reached out to me. I love how you're doing the organic way of just like getting out there, putting your name out there, meeting people. So yeah, let's let's get into like what you're doing and all that. And you know, I I love what you know, basically you're at this stage. You're a, a, like a stage of outreach. I get where you're. Again, you're just sort of yeah, getting your name out there and getting the name of like keeping people connected. So first, let's start with that. What is keeping people connected? Yeah, KPC, keeping people connected. We are a performing arts collective, uh, performing artists. We use dance mainly as our device to communicate, to use as a universal language to actually spotlight social injustice. Um, it started out as uh from lived experience with me and my siblings and um our experience with addiction and substance use disorder mental health disorders um and all those co-occurring you know nitty-gritty moments and what happened was i started using movement as a way to express my grief with what i was going through with my siblings and it quickly revealed itself to be an incredible, um, incredible means to actually bring people together. Um, the pieces that I was sharing about alcoholism and about substance use disorder and addiction, um, you know, I just took them to theatrical setting or dance setting. I'm based out of New York City. I'm over in Brooklyn, you know, but right, we're, we're out in Manhattan, we're in Queens, we're ever, all throughout all the boroughs and we're really trying to expand across New York State. Well, we've been expanding across New York State for a while. Um, but yeah, the pieces that I was sharing were really speaking to people in a very personal way that really pushed me to take my own personal trauma that I was processing and coping with and really start utilizing movement as a way to, to help other folks on their journeys. Um, and so what happened was the main piece that we started with about my siblings and me and with our substance use disorder and mental health um, disorders became this, this pathway to wellness through movement mm. that we're bringing to recovery centers across New York City and actually across New York State. Uh, we started doing it pre-pandemic. It was really getting like a like a like a bit of a juggernaut, like it was about to take off. And of course, March, 2020 yeah. knocked us off the rails for a hot second. Mm -hmm. um, we kept going virtually. We kept bringing it to people virtually. We connected with uh, Black Mental Health Alliance over in Massachusetts and uh, in Baltimore, actually, Maryland. And then um, different places around New York City, Fountain House and New York State Recovery Conference that actually comes out of Albany, New York. So yeah, we've been making connections for quite some time, but now is really um, an extraordinary moment where we're feeling like we can reach uh, in person, finally back in person. Um, a lot of the centers that we work with definitely have immunocompromised folks. Mm. And so we're not we were not able to be in person for quite some time. It's really been just about the last six months or so that we've been given that green light mm -hmm. to be back in person again. And so hence why reaching out to you and being mm -hmm. like, Hey, you're in Canada. Like that's no, <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Like let's mm -hmm. rock and roll. Let's get some, yeah. uh, some connection, you know, just get the feelers out there because Absolutely. yeah, we really do want to be able to reach people with this healing programming everywhere possible it's beautiful i love it you know like uh just from you and i talking like i have an artistic background as well and i know we talked a little bit about like how important you know creativity and imagination is yeah. and can be for like a, yes. helping with healing process and all that and you're touching on that so i really want to get yeah. into that before i do i do have a curiosity question about how man how defeating was it initially when covid happened or 
And oh, then gosh. what did you sort of learn from it? How did you adapt? Like, what was that whole process like? Because that, that does sound like it must have been so disappointing in a lot of respects. I mean, you know, everyone was in the same boat, I feel, to some degree. Sure. With just like everything that they had been building towards, working their little heinies off for. And here comes this, um, you know, global pandemic that definitely was devastating on so many levels, right? I mean, being in New York City and literally seeing the body bags being brought out on the streets, um, just piled. And it's super traumatic to, yeah. to think that people around the world somehow at this point have almost sort of, they almost act as if it didn't happen. Yeah. Or um, as if yeah. like it, you know, it wasn't that like we're Bad. past it. Yeah. We're past it. Yes. Um, we're not past it. It's still a very real part of life and a real part of uh existence now, really. You have to just kind of take it in stride and sort of figure out how to live with it. And yeah, I think New Yorkers uh are incredibly resilient, um, courageous people and super creative people too. And so I don't know if that, you know, probably ties into the next uh moment but yeah definitely yeah. just like continuing to put what it, it was never really a question of whether or not to continue it mm. was how it was how do we continue yeah. how do we continue yeah. um and how do we sort of innovate and um trick because we're kpc and the folks that i work with within within keeping people connected are all trailblazers all innovators um, incredibly radical human beings. And um, that is just ever, that's such a deep well to pull from inspiration and uh, just drive. And, you know, if you're sort of lacking that day and like, oh my gosh, I just want to like stay in bed and not, not, not get out and do anything. And then hopefully somebody else out of the collective has the the, the drive that day, the fight yeah. to encourage you. Yeah. Um, and hopefully you can do that on other days for them. And so it's just kind of is this nice, um, yeah, support system. You know? Beautiful. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. And like you say, you said the magic word, like creativity and how it's a creative, you know, environment yeah. that, you, that you live in. Yes. Yes. How important is, you know, creativity to you? Like, and I'll frame it this way, because like we, we sure. hear about like health and wellness and to me, it's like such an untapped part of a health and wellness regimen is like, is the whole creativity thing. Like we always talk about exercise. Oh, wow. We always talk yeah. writing yoga and such. Yeah. To me, yeah. creativity really, there's a huge opportunity there for health and wellness, isn't there? Absolutely. It's such a different, um, different entry point to healing. Mm. Um, it, it, it is, you know, there within recovery centers, within treatment centers and, however you want to look at it I have I have about two more than two decades worth of experience within recovery centers and treatment mm. centers and rehabilitation facilities wow. based on my lived experience and then professionally like trying to implement my own programming for maybe the last five years or so um so what I have seen that works you know it, it nothing to say about the things that that the therapists and folks within the centers are using right now. Talk therapy, yes, obviously, of course. Of course. Yeah. Like we have to use talk therapy. You know, we need counseling. We need therapists that are able to guide us through the trauma that every single one of us has. And certainly like folks who are deciding to deal with their substance use disorder and step into a recovery center in the first place. First of all, just not even sidebar, but just like, it's kind of the main point is that these are warriors. These are just like fucking fierce, fabulous people that have these disorders that mm. for some reason, for a lot of reasons are just very um, stigmatized mm. with those particular disorders. Like if someone has diabetes, if someone has cancer, you don't blame them for having that. Fair point. You, yeah. You don't blame them for having that. And and there is a proven methodology of treatment for um certainly cancer, for certainly diabetes, um, for mental health and for 
substance use, there's not. There is not a consistent methodology offered across the boards in recovery centers. Mm. I find that baffling. Um, I, I find that frustrating, uh, <laughs> infuriating. And knowing that some of them utilize movement as a pathway to healing. And like you said, in yoga, absolutely. Mm -hmm. In breath work and meditation, that's incredible. That's absolutely necessary. But in terms of actually putting the person who is actually in treatment, who actually has the substance use disorder, mental health disorder, eating disorder, alcoholism, addiction, putting them in the driver's seat and saying, okay, you have the autonomy and you actually have the power to shift the course of your recovery journey, using creativity as a pathway to wellness, mm. using dance, using yeah. uh, music, you know, writing music, creating mm -hmm. music. These folks are incredibly creative. You, I, I talked to, you know, I talked to them about what, where their creativity comes from. And, and they're like, well, I write rap, you know, I do spoken word. Mm -hmm. I, I am a pianist. I play the piano and like, they're yeah. actually prodigy level, yeah. um, Amazing. and musicians, <laughs> and, yeah. you know, um, writers and singers and dang, like just, just the, the sky is the limit. And, um, I think once we start to really see each of these individuals actually as an individual that is deserving of um, being treated as a human being that can be a part of their own recovery journey, that it's not like they step into the recovery center and it's like, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this. And they're just being told what to do. Right. That's not necessarily, that's not going to stand the test of time in my humble opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Clearly I have no opinions. Yeah. Clearly I'm super, right. I've, I've super been not up. opinionated at I was going to say, I've yeah. been picking, picking that up about you for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not passionate at all. Yeah. Uh, no, no, not whatsoever. I just, definitely am not yeah. yeah just on fire for this uh yeah, initiative. yeah. that's right yeah yeah exactly too funny um you know one of the things that's <laughs> that uh that you've yeah. dropping little nuggets as far as like some of your life and lived experience sure, i'd love to sure. give you uh the opportunity to tell people at home just a little bit more about that because there were definitely some foreshadowing or hinting sure. into some of your own personal experience what was the road that you know that led you to what you're doing today sure sure um, yeah, well, as I mentioned, you know, my sibling is my qualifier. I'm the oldest of three sisters, and then I do have an older brother as well. Um, and so my middle sibling, my sister, who's right behind me, 18 months behind me, um, actually deals with substance use disorder, eating disorder, um, you know, a number of co-occurring scenarios that no one treatment center has ever really been able to, to help. Um, and so growing up, we actually grew up, I, I'm out in New York City now, as mentioned, but yeah. we actually grew up in Missouri, in St. Oh. Louis, Missouri. Okay. Yes. And it's the Bible Belt of America, if you know yeah. what that means. Yeah. Yes, um, of course. And if you don't know what that means, it means that we were raised on the Bible and, um, you know, it's like to the nth degree, like, mm. like it was it was sort of, you know, toe the line and like follow these particular prescription of how to be and what to do and what to say. Yeah. And in terms of acknowledging that someone had a mental health disorder um, was just not a part of mm, our lives. Yeah. It's wow. just, you know, in, in, I, I, we grew up in the late eighties, nineties, uh, you know, into the two thousands of, uh, you know, in the Bible Belt of America and um, mm. mental health was just not, it certainly wasn't like part of an everyday conversation like it is for me now in my adult life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. go a day without, without talking about mental health and, and wellness and how to, um, how to take care of ourselves. Um, but yeah, growing up in that scenario, not knowing what to name what my sister was going through and what was starting to reveal itself to us, we had no idea um, what to do or how to address it. And so 
as each disorder sort of revealed itself, um, more and more um, research and just actual knowledge about, okay, what is actually going on here? I was already living out in New York City uh, when we finally started to actually name some of the things that my sibling was experiencing. And that journey of just self-discovery for myself of like, okay, like being a family member, a loved one of someone going through substance use disorder. I mean, that's a whole other, it's actually a whole other conversation in terms of like, when you talk about the recovery, who's actually going through it. Mm -hmm. And then you talk about the family unit. This is a family disorder. This is not, you're not on your own. You have people who love you that want that want the best for you, that want you to, to be healthy and happy. Yeah. And um, a lot of times that doesn't get addressed. Um, and if the family members, the recovery could be doing all the work possible. You know, they could mm-hmm. be in treatment. They could be, um, if you subscribe to AA, if you're doing the meetings, if you're doing mm-hmm. this and that, if your family members are not moving from their mindset, If their mindset is still stigmatized and while you should just be able to put the bottle down, while you should just have the willpower, you're not actually going to, it needs to be working in tandem. We do need to be able to address the beloved family and friends of the person who is actually experiencing these different co-occurring disorders. And, um, And I'm sort of talking in circles here, but it's all like part of my lived experience, which I yeah. think was your initial question. So it was, no, you answered it beautifully. No, I, I, it. <laughs> yeah, you completely answered it. No, it was great. Thanks for filling us in and being just honest about like, you know, your family background and what led you to that. It just, you know, it gives like so much depth to, it, especially when somebody's getting to know you and they're interested in the work and then finding yeah. out that origin story as to why you, you're, sure. why you're doing this. Yeah, right? why, so, the reason exactly. why. Exactly. Sure. So yeah. very, very cool. So what, what exactly is like, I guess the if somebody was to reach out to you, like for example, oh, actually let's start okay. with this. You've been reaching out so far to other recovery communities, yes. other like, yeah. uh, you know, so what is it ideally that you're looking to do? What are like sort of the future plans for, uh, yeah. for keeping people connected? Yeah. So our main, I think I, I did mention, yeah, we were really set to, to be able to like launch um, what has grown from my initial exploration of movement for myself to process my own trauma um, with my siblings and our family history of substance use disorder and mental health disorders. Um, That has evolved into a 40 minute dance piece that we actually pair with Uh, ahead of time, we do a movement workshop with participants. Uh, We move people through, we guide people through. You don't have to be a dancer. No one, no one needs to have any dance training in order to be in it um, at all. You can have two left feet or no feet and sitting down, you could sit down, you could stand up, whatever you want to do. And all the exercises are meant to be very accessible and inclusive and really just like lay the framework for what emotions we're going to reveal within that 40 minute dance piece that is called, I could never love anyone dot, dot, dot ellipses. Um, it's part of a quote from little women. Mm -hmm. I could never love anyone as much as I love my sisters. Mm -hmm. And that's something that my sisters and I would say to each other growing up, um, just in a very, you know, instead of saying, I love you and hanging up, we'd say, I could never love anyone as much as I love my sisters. And yeah. Yeah. And, um, just a really powerful, like emotional, uh, touchstone for us. And so then after that 40 minute moment, we have a talk back because the point is to access these very deep seated traumatic, uh, emotions and feelings that your body and your mind and your heart want to save you from and guard you from. They're trying to serve you. Mm -hmm. And yet we do need to excavate those things in order to heal from them. If you just hold on to trauma in the body and just hold it, hold it, hold it. We can't breathe. We can't move. We can't grow. And so what we're trying to do in reaching out to all these recovery centers, we're starting from where we are 
um, out of the pandemic <laughs> and, you know, reaching out to centers across New York City, across Brooklyn, uh, Manhattan, Queens. Um, you know, we have different recovery centers we work with and um, across New York State's New York State Recovery Conference is, and you can tell I'm in Brooklyn if you can hear the siren. Uh, yeah, I can hear that. Yes. Authentic. Yes. Yeah, authentic. So yeah, if you yeah. doubted I was in Brooklyn, now we know for now sure. Now we know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we work with um we work with a number of centers that um I can definitely uh you know have given us reference letters and all that uh so cool. logistical yeah. stuff. So right, as different centers might see this or I'm reaching out to them, I definitely have um more just sort of data and like gathering assessment from to like sort of prove uh what I've known to be true all along is that creativity and then movement in particular releases that trauma and it sort of opens folks up to a different absolutely different entry point but yes, it's sort of yeah. an ele elevated entry point to yeah to their recovery journey, it's accessing emotions and feelings and memories and trauma that they maybe would not have brought to the surface without movement as that pathway um, to wellness within their recovery journey. Um, and it's, it's that part that we are bringing to the table that, again, I, I you know, certain Certain places, thankfully, I'm discovering here and there, do have dance within their, I mean, cool. and I'm talking across the country, like I've found maybe two other. <laughs> wow. That that to me is wild. I feel yeah. like it should be a staple of, of treatment. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. obviously, I'm a bit biased. I feel like, <laughs> you know. Sure. Sure. But at the same time, you know, if you're trying to talk about how things work in tandem together, you know, you want to be able to access the things that that your body was protecting you from yeah. and then be able to move to a counselor, a therapist, someone who then has those talk therapy tools yeah. to address that. And so then, yeah, so we're trying to really create basically a new, yeah, revolutionary way of, of approaching um rehabilitation and recovery. Yeah, I love that. Such a cool idea. And yeah, with your own personal experience, I mean, you've seen it and you see how it can help yourself, other people. So I, yeah. and there's, what a massive opportunity there is there. The thing that comes to mind is for me is like, there's such a uh, importance and sort of weight being put in the whole mm. like mind body connection. Like there's sort of like we yeah. talked about the counseling, the therapy, the cerebral side of it, but the body, you know, the body keeps the score. So there's, you've seen all these like breathwork modalities that are showing yeah. up that are really helping to doing that. And to me, like sure. the way that you're viewing dance and, and presenting dance is pretty right. similar, right? It's like, I just, like you say, another angle at it or another pathway, but similar. It's like getting you, having that body mind connection, getting back into that. Cause we live so much in our heads a lot of the times. Right. Yes. So just inviting that movement and just so to be able to like get something that's like you say, maybe stuck or this idea that's protecting something in us and getting in up and out in such a beautiful, creative way is really remarkable. It's such a cool idea. So, and then hopefully in a safe, in a safe way as well, you know, we are sure. encouraging folks to be, it's very brave to, first of all, like I said earlier, these folks that are in recovery that are these, these folks that are dealing with substance use disorder, period, full stop, are warriors. These are incredibly intelligent, mm -hmm. kind, thoughtful human beings that deserve every opportunity to live their fullest mm -hmm. existence and be themselves and, and not be um, judged by these disorders that they have um that you know if a roll of the dice was different it could be you it could be yep. me it could be yeah. any it could be any number of folks you know right. yep. um the card the cards you're dealt um and then you sort of mo motor forward with that um as best you can right Absolutely. and being able to see each of these individuals um just as a full person that 
is deserving of, deserving Definitely. of and valuable, hugely valuable human being, um, incredible contributors to to the world, to to life, and um, certainly their loved ones. Uh, you know, I I I feel that about my sibling. Um, you know, as much as other people might, at some degree, or at any turn in the bend, might have seen uh, my sibling as um, you know, a throwaway. Mm, yeah, sure. To just, put, yeah. to just put it plain and, and really brutally, um, brutally, yeah. just super brutal and, and horrible. But at the same time, you know, again, I'm in New York city and folks who have mental health disorders are here in the multitudes. Um, and because we're in such a compact, dense, uh, population, you know, you run into folks every day, every day yeah. on the subway, on the street. And really what we're trying to do is offer some compassion yes. um, and understanding to, to the multitudes that are fortunate enough to not have these disorders that they mm. are living with. And so that they can have that compassion and understanding. And then the folks who are the recoveries who are dealing with that are able to be seen in a light where each of these different, you know, facets of, of recovery um, are able to work together to help them just realize their full, you know, self-discovery um, is, is huge. And a lot of times folks who have these substance use disorders and different co-occurring mental health disorders missed a, a growth moment um, in their childhood, in their adolescence, something happened that potentially robbed them of the ability to have those tools mm. to, to sort of have the capacity for self-discovery and, and sort of looking at themselves and understanding how to, um, how to help themselves, how to sort yeah. of break down, okay, yeah. how am I, what, how am I regulating my emotions? How am I, like that's not necessarily a tool that's even taught um yeah. in any way shape or yeah. form and i, I definitely think it should be yeah totally agree with you yeah very well put very well put uh i know you have a a hard out we got about two minutes here so it's a great <laughs> time to just wrap it up katie sure. thank you so much for coming sure. on the show today yeah absolutely. and uh you know if, if people are interested in 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 hearing more about what you have What's yeah. the easiest way to get a hold of you? Where can you be found sure. online? Uh, if you could oh, share that. Oh, yeah, please. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, we're all across all the social media platforms, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we're still on Twitter at the moment, but we'll see. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, that one's not our most popular. I would say Instagram and then our our website. And uh, yeah, potentially you know, Matt, if you have those in the, in the description or something like I that. I sure will. Yeah, Post absolutely. It. Yeah. And so Post that's keeping people, absolutely. So keeping people connected, that is uh, the Facebook and Instagram handle. And yeah, I'll yeah. have, it's uh, Catherine Pettit creative.com is the website. And yeah. of course, those will be in the show notes. Yeah. Catherine, yeah. so thanks so much for coming on today. I wish you all the best of luck. And of yeah. course, we'll keep in touch. I, I very much admire the work that you're doing. And uh yeah, feel connected with you as far as I uh, just want to definitely want to see how this uh, this goes. So let's keep in touch. And thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks so much, Matt. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.